Hey, Tim DeStazio here, and I am at my parents' house in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and I'm going to be installing the dust-free HEPA air cleaner. This is a great fan-powered HEPA filter product, uh, and I realized I needed to install this at my parents' house because I had taken some air quality readings prior to this visit here, and I realized that their particulate matter was really, really high. Now, particulate matter has been linked to all kinds of health problems, including asthma and even dementia. So obviously my parents, I'm very concerned about that. I wanted to clean up their air. They have a wood stove, which is probably a pretty big reason why they have high particulate matter. My hope is after installing this, making a few other duct sealing and other duct improvements, that we're going to clean up that air. So follow me along as we install it. This is a cool little unit. It's made really, really well and it has several options for duct connections. There are eight inch round duct connections on the top and the bottom, so the air would come in through the top and out through the bottom, or if you look around the backside, there are also rectangular openings that you can cut out that you can mount right to a duct. This would be really good for like a vertical duct drop, like you see in a lot of basement installations. The air comes in through the top, leaves through the bottom. Now my parents' installation is a horizontal furnace, so I'm gonna have to actually do a little bit of a hybrid of the two. I'm going to be pulling my air through this 8 inch circular hole and I'm going to be delivering it back into the return plenum via the back discharge opening here. Now upon further investigation after I actually saw my parents system that I was installing it I realized that the original installers did not do a great job. This is a panned return joist and this isn't exactly the best way of hooking up a return to a furnace. I hate pan joists, it's hard to seal them, it's hard to maintain good indoor air quality. I'm sure that is a contributing factor to why the particulate matter in their house is pretty high. I'm gonna still install this unit uh, and then we'll have to probably make a few modifications when we make some changes to this whole pan joist abomination, but nothing that we can't fix. Just for this video, we're gonna concentrate on installing the HEPA unit and we will worry about making some better duct improvements improvements on a later video, so stay tuned for that. Well, once we open it, we see that there are two main filters. The first filter that the air hits when it comes in through the top is this pleated carbon filter and adsorption, which is going to chemically bond the dust and even other uh, smaller particulates, even at the chemical level, to this filter. And then this is the HEPA filter. That is going to catch most of the fine particulates. We want to take good care of this filter. I'm not going to let a bunch of dust and other debris get on it. I'm going to put it in a safe place until it's ready to reinstall. Well, these back tabs come out really, really easily. Uh, there's a little bit of insulation that's already perforated. That comes out. And finally, we just apply a little bit of the adhesive gasket tape that is provided in the kit. That ensures a nice seal up against the ductwork. Same thing with the top. That comes out really nice, thanks to the perforations they put in there for you. And now we're ready to put a collar on. The kit comes with the templates. I guess make the cutting of the hole in the ductwork a little easier. So something else that I did was do my best to encapsulate this pan joist with mastic. Uh, just trying to keep as much particulates out of the air as possible. Well, here we are progressing a little farther along. Our system is mounted. It is ducted up. We got to do some duct sealing. Uh, we've got to get an electrical outlet installed there, and we will be wrapping this up pretty soon. Obviously, this duct needs to be insulated uh, just because we're in an unconditioned crawl space, and this technically is part of the return air. And the other thing that I like to do is install a Haven whenever I get the chance. This indoor air quality monitor mounts to the ductwork. Unfortunately, I didn't have a great spot to put it in there. I don't recommend installing it in the middle of an elbow if you can help it, but there was very little straight line duct I could install it in. Uh, this will work fine, but uh, it's just not a great uh, practice to be in if you can help it. Uh, this haven will read particulate matter, VOCs, humidity, temperature. It'll even read airflow. So uh, this will help me to monitor whether or not these improvements are actually making a difference. I've got a little bit of touch-up work to do there with some insulation on that pan joist, but we've got our return duct coming in here tapping off that pan joist we're reading that air with the haven ieq and then we're, we're returning filtered air through the 
carbon and the HEPA filter back into the return of our furnace and that's going to circulate throughout the system. So we're going to monitor this over the next few weeks with Haven and we're going to see whether we can get those particulate matter levels down. Now this dust-free model runs all the time. It plugs into an electrical outlet. But I want my HVAC fan to come on to sort of boost the process when particulate matter levels get pretty high. The challenge is the Haven is after my parents' filter that's in the grill. So I'm setting up a custom threshold where the fan will come on when particulate matter gets higher, but that threshold is a lot lower because the air that the Haven will be seeing will have a lot less particulate matter than the air that my parents will be breathing. But I also don't want it to wait until the air already is dirty before it comes on. And so I'm also creating another automation that will preemptively turn on the HVAC blower when I think that my dad is going to be creating a fire. And so it's when the outdoor temperature is cold and it'll be in the morning. Dad typically makes a fire around 7 a.m. And so this automation will turn on the furnace fan when it's cold enough that he would be making a fire and around 7 a.m. But that automation will only run the fan for about five minutes an hour. And that's because for some reason, if he did not make a fire, then there's no reason to run the fan. And so that five minute period is enough time for the Haven to sample the air. And if the particulates are high, then it'll keep the fan running. If they're not high, then that means dad's probably not making a fire and he'll shut the fan back off. This is a look from the Haven Pro portal for a sample week when it was really cold and dad ran the wood stove a lot. For the most part, particulate matter levels stayed pretty low, except for a couple of spikes. Now in times past, those spikes would have stayed elevated, but because I've put the dust free in there, and because the Haven is controlling my furnace fan, I'm able to move a little bit more air through all the filtration now, and we're able to handle those spikes. Now let's zoom into a 24 hour period. As you can see, my fan comes on, and every time it does, the particulate matter does spike a little bit, but usually not enough to make the fan stay running. But it is interesting that we need that furnace fan to run in order to move enough air from the house through the haven for it to see what is actually going on in the house. But aside from a few really high spikes, the dust free is doing a pretty good job of maintaining clean air in between those wood stove cycles. One thing that I did notice is that the VOC levels tend to spike whenever the fan comes on, and that's because I think there's some duct leakage causing some depressurization. Now, what's the fix for that? Well, we obviously need to fix whatever duct leaks that are there, but also maybe some fresh air ventilation added to the strategy would help pressurize the house and push those fumes up the chimney that are maybe backdrafting sometimes, especially when the fire is starting to die down and the draft isn't as strong. For as long as I can remember, Dad has always used a wood stove to primarily heat his home. And they create a great ambiance and the comfort is just wonderful. But in a tightly constructed home, a wood stove can create some challenges with particulate matter and other chemicals. So those have to be met with some mechanical solutions. Fortunately, with the dust free and the Haven IAQ, as well as future improvements that I'll make, Dad will be able to enjoy his wood stove without sacrificing his health. Now this HEPA filter unit is not in line with the return duct. It is a bypass unit, which means that it bypasses the return that most of the air is being pulled through. And it just sends a little bit of that air through the pleated, through the carbon filter, through the HEPA filter, and then returns it back into the return plenum. We would have way too much pressure drop if we tried to move all the air from this system through this unit. So this is a bypass unit, and it's a really good option for a residential system that can cannot handle the pressure drop that HEPA filters usually put on a system. When you see hospitals and clean rooms and other systems that have HEPA filters, it's because those fans are powerful enough and the system has been designed to work around that. Residential systems, they just simply don't have that option. So that's why a bypass system works a lot better. Now I gotta say, this unit has to be an improvement over what they had. I'm sure their air will be cleaner. I am very impressed with the quality of it. This is a great product if you are trying to improve your customer's indoor air quality. You just gotta also look at things outside of the system as well. For example, this Pan Joyce is not a great idea. We're gonna have to do something about that. We've got duct leakage on the other side here. We're gonna have to do something about that. You never wanna sell one of these units without also taking care of the low-hanging fruit and that's what I'm gonna be doing for my parents here over the next few trips that I come out is slowly making some improvements to their system obviously as a contractor you're gonna do that all in one shot or you're gonna give them options maybe they do a little bit at a time just like what my parents are gonna do as time allows but overall I'm very impressed with this product I hope you are too if you have any questions put them in the comments below thanks for watching like and subscribe and as always work safe